Hello and welcome to St. John's Lafayette Square. My name is Rob Fisher and I'm the rector of St. John's and I'm so happy to welcome you and all of you as well here. Happy Easter this morning. And let's try that again. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. All right. Um, this is a Holy Week and an Easter unlike any that we have ever seen before and surely unlike any that we will ever see again in our times but I am grateful for the ability that, that we have taken to try to harness every opportunity that we can. And I, I wanna say just a special word of thanks to the many lay leaders and volunteers, our incredible tech ministry team, um, our clergy, our musicians, and our hardworking staff who have put in uh, an incredible amount of effort, countless hours into making everything that we are doing possible. And I want to also thank all of you, all of us who are gathered here today in person and all of you who are gathering with us at home. It is good to be gathered. And so now we begin our Easter service in the traditional way as the early Christians did, starting in darkness and with the fire of Christ's light, bringing light to this sanctuary and to our lives. Please stand. Let us pray. O God, through Christ you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new light and grant that in the Paschal Feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain the festival of everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The light of Christ. of Christ. Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpets shout salvation, for the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round Bright with a glorious splendor, for 
your darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy court in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvellous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praise of this great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good, always and everywhere, with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the day when you brought our fathers and mothers, the children of Israel, out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the day when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the day when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell and rose victorious from the grave. Holy God, accept a morning sacrifice, the offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. He who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The prophet foretells a time when God will swallow up death itself and wipe away all tears. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away all the tears from all faces, and this, this, the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not handed me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone from, it, from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please join me in prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Please be seated. Before I officially decided to throw my hat in for the possibility of coming here to be rector, I did some looking around to learn about this community, about this church. And of course, I went to the website and I listened to recordings of sermons and I knew there would be affinity when I heard quotes from William Sloan Coffin. There's a special place in my heart for William Sloan Coffin, who was a great pastor of the 20th century and who Many of you have heard his quotes from sermons from this pulpit, I know, in the past. Whether you knew they were from him or not, um, he was somebody who had this ability to deeply love the people while also speaking bold prophetic truths. He saw the injustices in the world and he spoke out to inspire people to use their lives to divest their privilege to do good, to make the world more loving, more just. And he was also great with a turn of phrase. He would say things like, the problem with joyless Christians is that they aren't Christian enough. Or, you could win the rat race, but you're still a rat. <laughs> and one phrase that I knew was a phrase that that some of you have heard because some have even quoted it back to me because it has meant so much, especially in these times, which is that God gives minimum protection but maximum support. So this man who was so full of life, I got to actually encounter him once, only once, and it was close to the end of his life. He was in his early 80s, and he had had a, a heart situation and I believe also a stroke he was given six months to live, and when I saw him, it was one year after that point. Um, he had been a student at the seminary where I attended, and then later became the chaplain of the university where that seminary was located. So they threw a big uh, festival over a weekend in honor of him and his life of ministry. And the highlight of the whole weekend was a big dinner in the dining hall where they had several hundred people gathered all to sing and celebrate with music and speeches. Um, 
Noel Stuckey and Peter Yarrow from Peter, Paul, and Mary were there. And they played some music. And Gary, Gary Trudeau, who had actually featured him as a character in Doonesbury, um, spoke about Bill Coffin. But the highlight of the night was when he stood up from his chair to give a very short speech. And he made just a few steps, but got on his own power to the podium. And he held on, and he looked out at the people. And with slurred speech, he said, as most of you know, my bags have been packed for about a year, but the ticket has not yet come. Or maybe this is heaven. We have spent time this past year on the threshold of life and death. We have seen in the midst of death some of the joys of small things, and, and we have learned to appreciate things that during normal times we could easily look past and not take into account. Just simple things like being able to shake hands or give hugs or to see the face of the person in front of you when you're speaking. But also, we have been consumed with loss and with death to the point where it has become almost a way of life these last 12 months, or rather a way of not really living. And on that point, don't get me wrong, precautions are very important. We need to be safe. That is the loving thing to do, to be careful, to attend to one another. And I should say, if you can get a vaccine, it's important that you do get your vaccine. The sooner that we are all vaccinated, the sooner we will be able to get beyond this time. But even in the midst of the pandemic, there is life. And we learn the lesson to not count our days, but to make our days count. The old prayer says, in the midst of life, we are in death. But Jesus reminds us, and old Bill Coffin also reminds us, that in the midst of death, we are in life. Just as in the midst of sin, there is forgiveness. In the midst of ungrace, there is God's grace. God pulls back the veil at Easter, and the frame of our vision gets opened up. And we finally get it that our journey on this earth is not about avoiding death. It's about living life. And they are different things. And Jesus it leads us into that life that really is life. This Easter, many churches are recognizing that today, April 4th, is the anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King 53 years ago. And on the night before he died, and he was in Memphis to support the sanitation workers, he gave his final speech. Not knowing that he had less than 24 hours to live, he begins his speech talking about how grateful he is to have lived the full 39 years of his life so far. He says that he is happy just to have seen the beginning of the second half of the 20th century. These are his words. Strangely enough, I would turn to the Almighty and say, if you allow me to live just a few years into the second half of the 20th century, I will be happy. Now that's a strange statement to make because the world is all messed up. The nation is sick. Trouble is in the land. Confusion is all around. It's a strange statement, but I know somehow that only when it is dark enough can you see the light. And he went on to remember how 10 years before, when he was 29, a woman who was deranged tried to stab him with a knife at a book signing. And the knife came so close to his aorta that before his surgery, if he had sneezed, 
he would have drowned in his own blood. And he goes on to show his gratitude for the 10 years that he might not have gotten all that he saw during that time. And he also remembered the letter from a young girl who wrote to him, who happened to be a young white girl, who said, Dr. King, I'm so glad you didn't sneeze. Those 10 years living on the cusp of life and death. And then finally, famously, at the end of this final speech, he declared that even if he was to die, he would be happy because he had been to the mountaintop and he had seen the promised land. Like a true prophet, he could see more than most. He could see that there was still work to be done and that while it was a long cause, it was not a lost cause. And I'm sure he knew that the cause would need to go on past his mortal life if he were to live one more day or one more decade. And that his work would need to be continued by people like all of us today who are this moment blessed with breath and energy and life, and that we can use our lives to bring the beloved community about and to fight the plague of racism that has no easy vaccine. It's a prophetic gift to see more than what meets the eye, to see beyond the frame. And what I mean by saying beyond the frame it is like how life is on Zoom, Uh, I'm sure many of us are familiar with there is such a thing as a frame. It's what is on the camera and what is not on the camera. So if you've ever been in that situation where you're wearing maybe a coat and a tie, but you're wearing sweatpants and no shoes. Maybe there's a mess on the floor, but it doesn't matter because it's outside of the frame. Well, this is how we can sometimes live life as well where we only see what's within a certain frame, but there is more to the story. When you meet a person, you only see that frame that's being presented, but there's always, always more. And what matters is that God sees the whole picture. And in this gospel, it's helpful to think in these terms because we get this most mysterious ending to any gospel. Of the four gospels, Mark is the shortest one. It's the one where he uses the least words to tell the story of Jesus, which means what he says, every word is powerful. And at the end of the gospel, which we just heard, verse 8, we actually don't get a resurrection story. We only get an empty tomb story. Do you notice that? The women see the tomb is empty. They don't get to hang out with the risen Jesus and nobody's eating fish with him on a beach as we hear about in other versions of the telling of of his resurrection. We only see that they find the tomb empty and they find the angels and the angels tell them that he is risen, but they are afraid. And the final words tell us that they go away in fear and they say nothing to anybody. But do you see what Mark is doing? Mark is making us go beyond the frame. The really good news is there, but we have to find it on our own, with our own lives. Mark will not spoon feed to us. Mark says, go to Galilee, there you will see him. He's saying to us, lift your eyes off the page. In your life, he is risen and present to you. There you will find him. Coffin and King could see beyond the frame because they had that gift. But Jesus is a bridge to what is beyond the frame, and that is his gift to us. He takes us there, where we die to death and we die to the horizon, to the limit, so that we can live with him in the richness that we discover beyond. In the midst of life, we are in death, And in the midst of death, we are in life. We may or may not have our bags packed, but that ticket will come for each one of us one day. 
like it did for King and like it did for Coffin. And yet all we have to do is to really open our eyes, to remove the limitations of our vision. And we will see that the promised land is in sight, that heaven is surrounding us even now, and that Christ is risen, and he invites us to join with him in the life above. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for giving us power through your Holy Spirit to reveal your life to the world. Strengthen, bless, and guide us to make you known by word and example. For our companion relationships with the Anglican Church of Southern Africa and the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem, we pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Marianne and Chilton, bishops of Washington, and for all bishops and other ministers. We thank you for your creation and pray for the earth which you have given us to cherish and protect. Nourish in us your love for all you have made. Guide and bless us in our work and play and shape the patterns of our political and economic life. We pray for Joseph, our president, the leaders of Congress, the Supreme Court, and for all who serve our country, that all people may be fulfilled through the bounty of your creation. We are the servants of God. God is in your grace. Awaken our hearts to your presence in all people, those we love easily and those with whom we struggle, those different from us and those similar to us, those familiar to us and those unfamiliar to us. We are made in the image of God, guide us in your grace. We thank you for calling us to the glorious heritage of your holy people. Free us from lack of vision and from inertia of will and spirit. By your life-giving spirit, lead us out of isolation and oppression, redeem and restore us. We thank you for the gift of life with all its blessings and sorrows. Shield the joyous, especially those who are celebrating a birthday this week. John Sherry, Diana Clark, Ellie Eversoll, Hannah Gardner, Daniel Honeycutt, Heather Hopkins, Charles Kay, Haley Lyerly, Joy Nathan, Chloe Newfield, Nicholas Robichon, Chase Rind, John Staples, and Samuel Wakeley. And for those celebrating an anniversary this week, especially Sarah and Brady Demarest, Annie and Will Simons, and Hillary and Alfred Tesmar. Comfort and strengthen those in any need or trouble, especially those who are sick and who are shut in. Bless those who will be born today and bless those who have died, that by joining with the company of all your saints, we may rejoice in one unending song of praise. You alone we have eternal life. O oh God, our strength and salvation, hear all our prayers this day, and grant that we may live in the joy of the resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
please stand. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.